Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. This is quite a short video today, just a sort of a tip which I want to pass on to those of you that uh, may be messing about with vertical antennas in this wonderful weather we're having. They forecast on Sunday 30 degrees in the southeast, which seems to be a little bit too warm for area work, but perhaps if you get up early in the morning or maybe you wait until the sun starts to go down in the evening you can get your antenna work done because of course it doesn't get dark does it really until about half past nine those lucky enough to be in the north up in the, in the north of England Scotland um, uh, and uh, the Shetland Islands where I was a couple of years ago it doesn't really get dark at all in the summer does it so you guys can work almost night on your antennas anyway back to the subject um, I recently published, well actually yesterday, published a video about the Comet's portable antenna, the HFJ350M, and I forgot to mention the power rating. Well, the power rating that they claim is 100 watts SSB. Um, I would temper that a little bit. I would say about 50 watts SSB. Um, I'm always a little bit... Um, scared, not scared, but cautious about running high power into portable antennas. But they do say 100 watts on SSB, so that's what they say, and you've heard what I say. Uh, the other thing is that I've had one or two people ask me, why didn't I publish the SWR curves on each band? Well, the answer is very simple. The SWR curve is very much dependent on the radials that you attach to the antenna and how you set it up. And really and truly, if I was to publish the SWR curves for each band, I'm sure that more would write back and say, I can't repeat, I can't um, duplicate the, uh, the SWR you got. Well, the reason is because, as I've said before, um, a compact portable antenna is very sensitive to its surroundings and you need to set it up so that it works best in your surroundings and the key of course is radials the radials make a big, big difference because with a portable antenna those radials certainly are part of the antenna and unlike a much larger vertical antenna the radials are very very sensitive so that's the reason I don't publish the SWR curves because I know that you won't be able to duplicate them exactly. But like all antennas, if it's resonant, then the VSR, VSWR is pretty low. Now, one of the things that um, you, if you've got a vertical antenna, one of the decisions you have to make is how many radials to put out. Now that's, you can argue until the cows come home, how many radials are best for a vertical antenna. Um, some will say 128, we're not sure where that figure comes from, some will say 50, some will say 20, some will say well 4 or 5 is okay, and I would say that even with an earth stake it actually works, and that really is the key to what I'm going to talk about, the earth stake. You know, I see so many people running vertical antennas at home, and there's no sign of an earth stake. They have the radials laid out on the lawn, but very often think, well, wait a minute, where is the earth stake? Now, it's debatable how effective that is, but the fact is that the antenna works quite well with an earth stake, so that earth stake has a, a part to play in the performance of the antenna. But, but, more importantly, or as important, is the fact that it will enable you to connect your radials to the vertical. You know, one of the problems with um, radials is that how do you connect all those radials to the antenna? You may have only one or two, three, four bolts. And if you want to put up, put around about 20 radials, you think, wait a minute, how do I do it? You can, of course, buy a uh, base radial uh, plate, which I've seen advertised, 77 pounds, bargain. Or is it? You know, <laughs> I think I'm fairly well known for trying to find cheaper ways of doing these jobs. And I think I've found a cheaper way. So let me just show you what I've been doing and the way I would recommend it. It'll save you some money and probably be more effective. Those of you who have watched the previous video will know that uh, 
I advocate the use of a copper stake going into the ground as an earth for my portable operation. And here I am in the garden setting up a portable antenna system and courtesy of B&Q, a bit of copper tubing into the ground and a hose clip around the top of this um, copper tube and you can take a wire to the base of the antenna thus providing a good earth connection. Now if you come down the garden with me to a vertical I've erected you'll see that I've used three stakes. I've driven three copper stakes into the ground. Each stake has got a hose clamp attached to it and the stakes are linked together and one of those stakes is taken straight back to the earth point on the antenna. But the good thing is that you can now add hose clips to any of these copper stakes and add as many radials as you'd like. Just add hose clips, add radials. I've only got three copper stakes in the ground here just to really um, sort of demonstrate the idea. But you can see the point. You can actually add radials, plenty of radials. All you need is a bit of copper pipe and some hose clamps. So there we are. A quick, cheap tip for those that have vertical antennas and want to attach multiple radials. I'm sure others out there have got alternative ideas, but that's my take on it. That's the way I do it. And I do feel happy that I've actually got a decent copper earth connection in the soil as well as those 128 radials no perhaps not 128 um, I think that is a challenge too far as far as I'm concerned but radials are needed I think a earth is needed and I think that the copper pipe is a great way of connecting your radials cheaply courtesy B and Q, of course. But in the meantime, if you want amateur radio equipment, don't forget Waters and Stanton at Portsmouth. We offer some great deals. Pick up the phone, go onto our website. Uh, we'll be happy to help and advise you. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. Get out in the garden. Do some work. Don't get sunburnt. And just be envious of those guys up in the Shetlands that not only have got 24 hour daylight around this time of the year, they've also got an incredibly low noise level. Lucky guys. Take care. Speak soon.